So let's, let's clarify this because there's practical optimism or practical um, positivity, and then there's toxic optimism. And so what is, what is the, the different, it, different? So practical op optimism, it's, it's, it's rooted in, in reality. And although you have a positive mindset, you are optimistic, right? And, and you believe and you have hope and that everything will ultimately be okay. You also acknowledge your negative, um, sad and fear-based emotions. You don't minimize them, right? Um, you acknowledge them, you'll feel them, you will talk about them, you process them, and you don't minimize them. Toxic optimism is where your negative, sad, fear-based emotions or experiences you, you reject them, you, you suppress them, you push them away, you ignore them. And, and instead they are replaced with these, this false, um, facade of happiness or cheerfulness, I guess is the best way to put it. And you don't talk to anyone about them. You don't express them. Uh, you don't talk about what you're really going through. You just don't, you just always come across as happy. And I think what, when, when I was kind of studying this on what toxic optimism was, immediately I thought about someone who used to work at Girls Inc. years ago. And, and we had someone that was like that, always had a smile on her, on her face, always presented as cheerful, as happy, nothing bothered her and always up until until she could no longer pass that off, present that. And then it would be this breakdown. Like, like it was like for so long, she, she, I don't know the best way to put it. Um, she would present as happy. And then one day it would just be total meltdown. Like she would just break down, she would cry. And I think it was, and I didn't recognize that as toxic optimism back then. I didn't know what it was, but now, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Now, now I do. And, um, yeah, so I, I, I think when, when you suppress all that, you don't allow it to come up and, and, and come out and, and acknowledge it and talk about it. I, I think, you know, it will just eat you up inside, man. It will just eat you up inside in one way or the other. It's going to come out. It's going to come out. And I think it can affect your health too. Um, it can be you doing that to yourself, toxic optimism to yourself, where you always present as happy. You always have to be the funny one. You always present as cheerful, like nothing gets you down, blah, 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 blah. Or it can be someone doing that to you. Right. So for instance, if you are going through like a painful situation, it could be someone close to you or a colleague say, uh, minimizing that painful situation by saying things, ah, oh, you know, it was for the best or, Oh, look on the bright side. You know, everybody else, everybody, you know, somebody else always has it worse than you or, uh, you'll get over it. Uh, things happen for a reason. You know, those cl cliche saying minimizing the pain that you're in, the suffering that, that you're in, you know, that, that, so it, so it can be something that you, uh, apply to yourself. Or it can be something that's some, something that's applied to you by someone else. So, you know, just be aware of that. Be aware of that. It's equally as important to acknowledge and address our negative emotions as it is to be optimistic. It's equally as important. It's, it's, we need to process and work through those negative, uh, emotions, those fears, those struggles, those challenges that life brings us because life 
can be cruel sometimes. It, it can be hard sometimes. Business can be hard sometimes. Our personal relationships can be hard sometimes. And it happens to all of all of us. It's it's life. And when we recognize, acknowledge, talk about, and process through those negative emotions, whether it's fear, anger, sadness, you know, depression, whatever it is, when we are acknowledging them, that's us being authentic and true to ourselves. That's us actually being good to ourselves, right? That's being good to ourselves. Um, it's validation that all of our, our emotions and feelings uh, are valid. And it's really, I believe, the only uh, true, the only way to a truly happy and, and healthy life is, is being honest about all the emotions that we feel. And, and hopefully your feel, you know, the feelings of happiness, hopefulness, cheerfulness, joy, contentment, hopefully those feelings, which are feelings of optimism, uh, outweigh and, uh, happen much more often than the negative feelings of sadness, you know, anxiety, fear, you know, those, those, those sort of things. Um, optimistic people, I think one of the big differences is optimistic people recognize difficult emotions and situations. And instead of dwelling on the negative aspects of that situation, we make a plan, man. We make a plan and we take action to improve or overcome those challenges. We do. Um, I know how I operate, man. And I definitely acknowledge my, my, um, my negative emotions. I don't even know if negative is the right word. Probably, probably I don't know other way to, you know, when I say negative, I mean, you know, it's like a whole bag of, it could be fear, sadness, being overwhelmed, not feeling good enough, not believing in yourself or your project, you know, that, that kind of thing. The op opposite of opt optimism. When I'm feeling those things and those things do come to me, um, I definitely acknowledge them. I'm really lucky that I got Kat as my partner and I can say them out loud. I can tell her that I'm feeling these things and uh, and I'm not doing good this particular day. And she's really kind and gentle with me. And she knows how to talk to me to where, um, I can start processing, processing them and working through them and getting back to optimism. If I'm ready, I'm not always ready. There's some, sometimes when I feel those emotions, I want to sit with them for a day or two. I don't know if it's that I want to sit with them for a day or two and feel them, or if I just don't have the strength to start um, combating them and and making a plan and taking action towards them and pulling myself out of them, right? Because sometimes it can be exhausting. Yeah, what do you do, Willow? I mean, when when you have when you get bombarded, you know, because we all do with, with, with that, 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 uh, you know, th those feelings and you start getting overwhelmed, depressed and nothing's going right. And, uh, like, do you sit with it? Are you comfortable sitting with it do, or right away? Are you uncomfortable and you start processing it or? I am definitely very uncomfortable when it comes to dealing with that kind of negative emotion. Um, I honestly do try to distract myself from it for a couple days. So I don't have to like I can get used to the feeling instead of uh, like confronting it immediately and trying to solve it. Yep. Um, but almost always I go to my best friend, um, Maya, and my partner, Titan, and I just unload everything. And yep. I might spiral for a couple days where I'm just like repeating like what I'm thinking. But yeah. They give me a safe space to like talk about it and to just listen to me instead of trying to help fix it or try to solve the problem. They like they listen and offer like helpful feedback. So I think it's important to have someone like that yeah, to bounce off of so that you can realize how you're thinking because it can be difficult to just like sit with yourself and like process everything. Yeah, and you're lucky that you have 
Titan in Myra, and we met Myra. Maya. My, yeah. Myla. Maya. Maya. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I only met her once, but I liked her immediately. She's awesome. She is awesome. So you're lucky you've got those people in your life. I'm and you do. Because, yeah, like I'm lucky that I have Kat and I've got really good girlfriends that I can, I mean, I can unload on, man. Mm-hmm. And they can see the worst, weakest, saddest side of me. And I know they're, and I, and I feel safe with them. They're not going to judge me. You know, and um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. What about you, uh, Olivia? Well, you're optimistic, so I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I have my moments. Too. Everybody does. <laughs> yeah. That's that's being that's called being a human, yeah. right? That's called being a human. So, um, how do you process yours? Do you same question? Do you sit with them a couple of days, like like, or right away? Do, do, do you push them down and don't acknowledge them? Do you acknowledge them and then? start going through the process to work through them like what's what's your formula with them i acknowledge them i let the feelings come in and then i meditate you meditate Meditate do you talk to your partner about them or your mom or your sister because you've got a you've got family that you're really close to and you're close with your your new your new man so uh do you talk to them because you're kind of shy yeah once i process it because it's kind of hard for me to be vulnerable even with people that I feel safe with. Yeah. So I kind of have to process it before I can talk to them. Yeah. Can I tell everybody how you pro- how you talk to me? <laughs> yeah. Because we're close. Yeah. Anybody that, that doesn't know us, like at girls like, like me and Olivia, Willow and Sarah, I mean, we're, we're, we're close. <laughs> well, we work together every day. And we have genuine love and genuine friendships. We're not just like, you know, mm-hmm. coworkers um we're close so when something's off with one of you girls or one of us we all know it and so the way olivia you like to process is cat is a little more gentle with you me i'm like what's going on olivia what are you sad (laughs) are you sad until you said are you gonna cry (laughs) i'm just kind of like you know i wear my heart on my sleeve i'm kind of really open kind of that that way and um and you'll just look at me and nod <laughs> you don't say anything and I see your eyes well up and then I know it's like oh okay something I, something's not right and I and I and I let you I'll usually come over and give you a little hug from behind or a pat and tell you I love you and then the next day we get a text <laughs> <laughs> a mile long right then yeah. you always text cat not me Right. I think Tat Kat's the one that's more nurturing. Like you see her more as the nurturer. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. is that it? Yeah, because you don't you don't text me. <laughs> um but yeah, it's it's like, but that's how you that's how you communicate to Kat and I um when you're feeling troublesome, when you're feeling hurt, when you're feeling, you know, when you're having those feelings. That's how you communicate t- to us. You try to hide it, but we can yeah. see it. And then it will always be me like, what's going on, Olivia? You're okay? You, you, and then I'll go, oh, I'll go, oh, wait, oh, oh, are, are you going to cry? You go, <laughs> and you're like, yeah. <laughs> and then I back off. And then the next day we get a text. Um, and you and you explain very eloquently in your text, like, what's going on. So that's, yeah. is that how you like to communicate with your family too? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's just hard for me to talk about it, but it's easy for me to write it down. Yeah. So it's hard for you to articulate verbally in yeah. that moment. Because all the emotions come crashing and I, I kind of hate people seeing me vulnerable. I was going to say, do you not want people to see you cry? Yeah. yeah. Is it because I make fun? <laughs> it's like <laughs> funny guys cry. <laughs> well, for a while there, man, every employee I hired would cry. I mean, I was like, I was on a roll. I just, started, so, you know, everybody knows in the interviews, I started asking, do you cry? <laughs> <laughs> okay all right well that's interesting so um we all we all have our own way of dealing with these these emotions but um but there are people that are not optimistic out of that 75 percent of us that have to learn how to be optimistic and apply optimistic tools and behaviors to our life uh, a percentage of them will not. And of course, I meet them all the time. I meet them, you know, uh, sometimes in the, in the business arena, sometimes in the personal arena, I have people in my personal life that are not optimistic. They're more, you know, pessimistic. So, you know, there's also health benefits of being op- 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 optimistic. Um, 
optimism, it has been studied and quite, quite intense, quite intensively, and it is tangible and it is scientific. So what they've discovered with people that are optimistic is there is a much lower risk of cardiovascular issues and events, like a much lower risk of, uh, heart attacks, um, things like that and heart, heart problems. So that's, that's pretty compelling. And this, this next statistic I thought was really, really compelling and really got me where, okay, man, I'm going to make sure I'm going to really, really be aware of when, um, when I'm starting to, to, to lose my optimism. People that are optimistic live 20% longer. That's cray cray. 20% longer. That statistic alone should be enough incentive for all of us, right? To start practicing optimism or learn how to practice and implement optimism into our life. 20% longer. That's big. That's big. Um, people that are optimistic, they're stronger and better, uh, they have stronger and better, longer lasting relationships. They have less anxiety and less depression. They sleep better. Yes. And they, now listen to this. This is going to catch a lot of people's attention. People that are optimistic tend to make more money and they absolutely save more money. I thought that was pretty interesting. So if the 20, living 20% longer doesn't catch your attention, making more money should catch your attention, right? So you make more money, you're gonna need more money if you're living 20% longer. (laughs) So it's a good thing we make more money if you're optimistic, because we're gonna live longer. So we're gonna need it. But, um, Yeah, I think those are all really, really um, highly incentive, really good incentives to to take a look at yourself and be honest with yourself. Are are you optimistic or do you struggle with optimism? Do you need need to work on that? Um, Exactly one year from now, our lives can be better. It can be the same or it can be worse. And this is our decision. This is our choice. And we can freely, freely choose whether we want our lives to be the same, better or worse. We can choose to take the step. So our life is better one year from now. We can also choose to do absolutely nothing. Personally, I want my life to be better one year from now, we were just discussing this today, all of us, like some things that were making me or that were overwhelming me and, um, taking away from my happiness and my energy. And we were talking about that today. We've talked about that a lot at Girls Inc. as, um, a group the last year, I think on, on, on these issues. And we've, we've made, we've talked about them so much and they became, and and they were so real and and we took them very so seriously that we we've made some changes and some pivots and some adjustments with our business model and with some things at work. Um, so we could experience more happiness and find that work life success and happiness kind of balance. Right. So, um, I think that's important to do. 